Welcome in to New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. In today's show, we're going to get you that Kayvon Thibodeau injury update, and it's better than you might think. We also got one on Darian Beavers, and then we got some winners and losers from last night's Week 2 preseason game against the Cincinnati Bengals. But I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura, an all-in-one digital safety tool that's hooking you guys up with a 14-day free trial. We do more online now than ever, and they're going to do more to help you protect yourself and your identity. Get started today with a 14-day free trial, Aura.com slash chat sports. K. Von Thibodeau. It's not the worst news in the world. He is going to miss a couple of weeks. He does have a sprained knee, no torn ACL, no torn MCL. That's the good news. And it could have been much worse. If Kayvon Thibodeau would have left last night's game, a preseason game with an ACL injury, I would have been crying. When it happened last night in the game, I was just like this, looking around. I was like, no, this, this can't be actually what's happening. And it was... A shell shock at first because you don't ever want to see your first overall draft pick go down with an injury like he did. But he's only going to miss three weeks is what it sounds like. It sounds like he has a chance to play week one against the Tennessee Titans in the regular season. I think that might be a stretch. And at this point, if he doesn't play week one, it's not the end of the world. Because this Giants defensive line is good enough, in my opinion, to hold down the fort. If he is not 100% ready... I would not play him at all because you still have guys like Aziz Ojolari. You have, maybe it's O'Shane Zimenez. Maybe it's Quincy Roche. Maybe it's Tom and Fox. Maybe it's Ryder Anderson. You have a lot of guys that could step in and take his spot. Of course, they're not Kayvon Thibodeau, but they could hold down the fort for a week or so. You got Leonard Williams. You got Dexter Lawrence, Aziz Ojolari. You got enough dogs on that front defensive line to hold it down for a couple of weeks. I would love to see him in week one. I don't know if it's going to happen, but let's get the good vibes going. Just type five in the comment section right now. You know he's hurting right now. He's upset. He's hurt. He's going to miss most likely week one. Not playing again, obviously, in the preseason. Sounds like a three to four week injury with a sprained knee. Type five, his jersey number in the comments to show our guy Kayvon Thibodeau some love and a speedy recovery. And this is why you subscribe to New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. Because when news breaks, when rumors break, everybody in the office looks at me and says, yo, Marsh, how can I help get you guys a video? That's what we do. Breaking news, we get you guys a video as soon as possible. And make sure your notifications are turned on because we're going to be putting out videos every single day all season long. Hit that big red button and help us get to 11,000 subscribers. The injuries never stop, it seems like, with the New York Giants. And while the Kayvon Thibodeau injury update was good, it does not sound good for our guy Darian Beavers, the six-round inside linebacker pick out of Cincinnati, who's flashed in camp and he flashed in preseason. Mike Garofolo said, all indications are that Giants rookie Darian Beavers suffered a significant knee injury, as Art Stapleton noted. MRI this morning to get the full picture. And it sounds like it's the worst-case scenario, and he's going to be out for the full season with possibly a torn ACL. I don't want to speculate, but Art Stapleton also tweeted that it looks like we're not going to see Darian Beavers until 2023. So this is what that inside linebacker depth chart looks like right now. You got Martinez as your Mike. You got Tay as your Will. And you got Carter Coughlin, Micah McFadden, and uh, Cam Brown all competing to make this roster. Darren Beavers will probably go on IR, so that opens up a roster spot. And I expect the Giants to keep four or five inside linebackers. And that might have opened up a spot for a guy like uh, Carter Coughlin or Cam Brown to make this roster. It sucks that Beavers is gone. He looked really good. He was the type of linebacker we needed, had that sideline to sideline speed and could be a blitzer up the middle or off the edge. Sucks to see him go, man. Injuries suck. I'm sick of it. It seems like every time we do this and the Giants start preseason, injuries happen. The Giants have had the most players since 2010 on injured reserve in the NFL. I don't know what it is, but I'm sick and tired of it. If you're tired of injuries and you agree that injury, injuries blow, I just want you to type F injuries in the comment section. Because, look, I'm tired of it. I know you're tired of it. Let's just voice our frustrations a little right here. Type F injuries in the comments right now. We told you guys about Aura off of the top of the show, but let's tell you more about them. When you go to Aura.com slash chat sports, you're going to get near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, and they're hooking you guys up with a 14-day free trial. I was a loser. I didn't have Aura. 
I had my debit card hacked into. Some people in Seattle went to some mall and spent $1,000. Luckily, I got it back, and then I got hooked up with Aura, and it has not happened since. Not only can you protect yourself, but you can also keep your family's online activity safe from hackers. The hacksters and the fraudsters, they're smarter than ever before, and we need to stay on top of it, and Aura is going to do that for you guys. A 14-day free trial that you can cancel at any time with zero charge. No, no reason not to get hooked up. Go to Aura.com slash chat sports. I promise you, you won't regret it. That link will be in the comments and description of today's show. We also have some winners and losers to get to. Didn't get to go as in-depth as I wanted to with this because once the Kayvon Thibodeau injury stuff came out, I dropped everything and got that out so we can get you guys a video as soon as possible. So I couldn't go in as depth as I wanted to, so I only got five. I got three winners and two losers. We may talk about it later in the week. But the biggest winner, Alex frickin' Bachman. This is someone that did everything last night to put his best foot forward and try to make it on this 53-man roster. Not only was he great as a receiver, we'll show you those stats in a second, he had a tackle on kick return right after he scored the go-ahead touchdown. 11 grabs, 122 yards, two touchdowns, 11 yards per catch. He catches the go-ahead touchdown in the fourth quarter, goes down on kick return, or kickoff, makes the tackle, and then comes back and catches the game-winning touchdown from Davis Webb. It seemed like Bachman was always open, whether that's scheme, whether that's him. He was the beneficiary of it. This is someone that's going to fight tooth and nail to make this roster because it is a loaded wide receiver depth chart. All four guys on screen are going to make this roster. Galladay, Shepard, Tony, and Robinson. Then you got guys like Richie James, who played, had one grab for eight yards last night. Colin Johnson has looked really good in the preseason. Darius Slayton didn't play last night. C.J. Board left because of a, a rib injury. David Sills looked good last night, and so did Alex Bachman. We got the Bachman Brigade, and we got Sills Army. There's going to be a fight We're in preseason three and the rest of the way to who is going to make this roster, because I only think the Giants are going to keep six or seven receivers. And with the four we mentioned, you're going to have guys like Richie James, Colin Johnson, David Sills, Darius Slayton, and Alex Bachman all competing for those final two or three spots. And once you go in a game and you do Victor Cruz style, 11 catches, 120 yards and two touchdowns, and you contribute on special teams, that is hard to not take a notice of if you're Brian Dable and Mike Kafka. But I want to put you guys on the hot seat right now. Does Alex Bachman make the roster after his heroics last night versus the Bengals? Let me know what you think. I had to say right now, I don't think he does, but I think he definitely has a chance, and he's going to have a chance in week three of the preseason and in the rest of the way. But I want to hear from you. Type Y for yes or type N for no. A loser we have. He's not even really a loser because he didn't even play. But I do think he is a little bit of a loser for what happened in last night's game. Gary Brightwell did not play last night, and that gave an opportunity to Antonio Williams and Jay Sean Corbin to get more reps. And they got the lion's share of the reps at the running back spot since Breida and Saquon Barkley did not play. I love the way that Antonio Williams runs the football. Head over toes, behind his pads, a physical style, a smash mouth type of running style. And he's good in the receiving department. Had about six or seven catches. And Jay Sean Corbin... He looks quick. He looks agile. When he puts his foot in the ground and gets north and south, he might be one of the faster backs on this team. He also provides kickoff return ability. So Gary Brightwell may be looking on the outside in when it comes to this Giants 53-man roster. I like Brightwell. I thought he looked good in the first preseason game, but you got to stay ab uh, available because the best ability is availability. And if you're not going to play and you're going to let your counterparts play and look good, that's not a sign, a good sign, that is, for Gary Brightwell. Ryder Anderson, the defensive lineman, looked really good last night. And with Kayvon Thibodeau out, maybe for a week, maybe for two weeks, definitely not going to play in the preseason, he's going to have a chance to increase his snap count in week three of the preseason. He looked really good. He's active. I think he had a half a sack, two tackles, and a tackle for loss. This is someone that has good hand placement. He's quick. He's strong. And he's going to fight like hell to make this roster. Shout out to Ryder Anderson. From Katy, Texas. He looked really good last night. We've given you two winners so far. And I think I know everybody is going to say Alex Bachman. And that's cool. But other guys that I didn't include on the show that looked good. David Sills looked really good. 
Daniel Jones was solid. It had the interception. We'll get to who dropped it in a second. I also thought Evan Neal looked really, really good. I counted 14 snaps last night for Evan Neal and only one negative rep. But I want to hear from you. The biggest winner from last night's game against the Bengals. Shout them out in the comment section. A loser is Daniel Bellinger. The Giants turned the ball over. Oh, Daniel Jones threw an interception. The ball, Daniel Bellinger's running like a five-yard drag route. Ball's out here. Really tough catch for a fourth-round rookie tight end that wasn't a receiving threat in college. Running full speed, ball right here. Should he have caught it? 100%. Could Daniel have Jones put it on his number and made it easy on his rookie tight end? 100%. But those are the type of balls that you have to catch if you want to be a starting tight end in the NFL. Bellinger, he's the number one tight end on this roster. That drop, it hurt. I don't think it affects anything. But for that drop, and it turns into a turnover, that makes you a loser from last night's game. I want to—I asked you about the winners a second ago. But now I want to ask you about the losers. Who was the biggest loser from last night's game? Is it Gary Brightwell, even though he didn't play? Is it Daniel Bellinger because he dropped that ball? Let me know what you think in the comment section right now. Devery Hamilton. The Giants have been razor thin at backup offensive linemen, and especially backup tackle. And Hamilton stepped in and looked really good last night. On the Jay Sean Corbin touchdown, a run off the weak side, Hamilton washed down the entire line. Went for, well, he started at left tackle, and he ended up where the right guard lined up. He looked good. He looked good in pass blocking. He looked good in run blocking. He was moving people. And we need depth on this offensive line. We know Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal are going to be the bookend tackles as long as they stay healthy for a really long time. Shane Lemieux is currently hurt, so you're going to maybe have Max Garcia, Jamil Douglas, Ben Bredesen just got hurt. Maybe Hamilton can slide in and play a little bit of guard. The depth is needed on this offensive line. You see all the hurt people. There's a lot of hurt people, and Hamilton's making a good case for himself to make this 53-man roster. If you're a real one, that means you finished today's video. That means you made it this far in today's show. So drop a real one in the comments section, and we'll see you next time on the next New York Giants Now.